And I can see why people are making the connections um, in terms of the sexual transmission. And uh, of course, it's a virus and, uh, you know, people trying to figure out how to respond to it. There's no cure. I can understand that. But in reality, Zika, the, 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 um, the, it, the disease itself is not a very uh, acute disease. Like it's kind of like a passing flu or a passing cold. And the implications, the, the, the scary part about Zika is really what are the possible neurological implications, even for adults or, it, or it, uh, in long term, right, which are the things that people are looking into now. And I do think that those are really important questions. But um, Zika might also go the way of chikungunya in Puerto Rico, which was a huge problem a year or two ago, and now chikungunya has basically died down into a low-level endemic infection. And I think Zika is probably likely to do the same. I think the broader question, which is not to say that it's not a big deal, and that it doesn't, of course there should be public health uh, resources devoted to it, and it is an emergency. Um, but I think the broader question with regards to Puerto Rico and perhaps also with regards to Florida, which also doesn't have the extension, some of the extensions of Obamacare, um, is that we need to think about public health in a smarter way, right? We need to have a social justice conscience about public health. Public health can't just be emergency management. And this is one of the big um, lessons learned from the Ebola outbreak, right? That if uh, in Sierra Leone, which had a devastated public health infrastructure after the Civil War, and so you can, you can, you know, uh, helicopter in a bunch of money, a bunch of doctors, a bunch of nurses, a bunch of resources, but you're still dealing with a social field which is saturated with health problems at the most basic level, including people's access to clean water, which is a fundamental human right issue, right? And so in Puerto Rico, those are also issues that we're, uh, that we're coming up against, access to clean water, among, uh, among many others. And so I think for me, that what drives me and what makes me uh, really passionate about this work and what sustains my engagement with HIV and what sustains my engagement with questions around Zika, around addiction, around mental health, is really thinking about the political dimensions of public health and thinking about what is our social responsibility uh, to the most marginalized in our societies, right? And how do we think uh, in a sustained and equitable way about distributing health resources so that we're not just using emergency management kind of uh, responses to deal with what, they may be emergent diseases, but what's really underlying is not the emergent disease, but rather the condition of under-resourcing um, and poverty and uh, democratic insufficiency. And so in Puerto Rico, I think all of those are primordial problems, you know, uh, with the imposition of the control board that Obama has recently uh, put on Puerto Rico, we see the likelihood of even greater austerity measures against public health and against education. And this is crazy to think that austerity measures uh, that cut back public health funding and educational funding are going to uh, produce anything other than a greater public health crisis. So to me, that's really, you know, the, the question of the structural, uh, the structural component is really the thing that makes me very passionate. Well, a lot of different things matter. And like I said, different communities have different needs. And so it, it's difficult. And one of the things that I think is necessary is that we tailor our public health responses, our prevention campaigns um, to the particular communities where those things, uh, where, where we see um, those needs. Uh, and uh, of course the CDC and the, pu the public health authorities say that, uh, but I think that there are still real problems with, um, with producing that. And it doesn't matter how much like culturally appropriate uh, marketing you do, like culturally sensitive public health marketing you do, if the fundamental structural <laughs> needs of uh, people's health are not met. You know, people in Puerto Rico are waiting a year to see a specialist. No, because of the economic crisis has, has forced a massive migration of medical professionals out of the island. And so if you have a, a, a serious condition that you need to see a specialist for, you might wait six months. No? So that is not the same as people in New York City. It's not the same as people in Miami. No? So how do we think about the local specific needs of communities and address those? And then um, I think a lot of us from a lot of different quarters are concerned about, uh, I mean, we're all really excited about PrEP and the, the kind of long, uh, the long term um, 
a, the sort of injectables that are being developed and the things that promise to have the sort of long long effects uh, from one from only one injection and things like that. But uh, so prep, I think, is important and necessary, and I'm so happy that it's here. But I think that it's a serious problem to reduce HIV prevention only to pharmaceutical interventions. And I think that HIV activists should be militant, militant in insisting that our community needs are more important than uh, just access to pharmaceuticals. No, that actually questions of health prevention need to address uh, people's everyday needs, people's everyday existence beyond just whether they can um, whether they can access the, the pharmaceuticals. And I know that a lot of us here are concerned about that. Um, and then finally, like I said, I think in terms of Native American communities, in terms of Puerto Rico, in terms of the other uh, unincorporated territories of the United States, I think decolonization, and it's not a metaphor, decolonization <laughs> is a real and, 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 um, and present need in terms of addressing the public health crisis that exists in Puerto Rico and also in terms of ending the HIV AIDS epidemic, which I think is completely feasible. It is feasible at this point to end the epidemic.